Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of this timetable for the live sessions for RBI Sabian Nabar and our mobile application. So I'm moving on to the very first question of the day. So here the question is what is the total expenditure on the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana? So I hope all of you must have heard that this scheme has got an extension. So the seventh phase of this scheme has been launched. After this launch, now the total corpus of this scheme has been extended to 3.91 lakh crore. Okay. So under this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Aniyojana, what the government is doing? The government is providing free food, uh, food grains to uh, to the poor families. Okay who are covered under the National Food Security Act. 5 kg per person per month is given freely to the people. So the entire burden of the subsidy because the food is procured by the government at a particular rate from the farmers so that the farmers are not getting hit by this entire subsidized thing. So farmers are being paid and the money is not being taken from the consumer. So who is bearing this cost? It is the government who is bearing. So the amount of this cost is equal to 3.91 lakh crores after the launch of the seventh phase. So let's look into the news exactly, the scheme in detail. So I have already told you the central government has extended the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana for another three months. So this is the seventh phase whenever there is an extension of the scheme that extension is termed as the new phase of that scheme so here it is the seventh phase of this scheme which has been extended for three months and this seventh phase will run from october 2022 to december 2022 so under this scheme free grains are being distributed 5 kg per person per month for all the beneficiaries covered under the nfsa Moving ahead, this is the seventh phase. So the total expenditure which the government is going to bear in this seventh phase particularly stands at your rupees 44,762 crores. Okay, and if you add this amount in the total expenditure, then the total expenditure is rupees 3.91 lakh crores. So guys, this amount is important because your NABAD phase 2 is coming up and all the students who have their different exams like IBPSPO or PFRD, ESIC, whatever exam is this, this scheme is going to be relevant for all the examinations. So listen to me very carefully and try to memorize the corpus, okay, because corpuses are important. So this corpus is important. I hope you can remember the seventh phase corpus as well because this is the newly launched phase. Now coming to the total food grain. How much food grain uh, was disbursed or how much is it going to be disbursed in the seventh phase? So the total outgo of the food grains in the seventh phase alone will be 122 million, uh, sorry, lakh metric tons. Okay. The total allocation of the food grain from first phase to seventh phase stands at 1,121 lakh metric tons, okay? Now here we have the phases of this scheme and all these phases with their tenure, in my opinion, are important because I have already told you that there are certain phases of this scheme and phases are also important, okay? So I think you should know the tenure of these phases of this scheme. Now the next question is, where is Lata Mangeshkar Chowk located? So here uh, a chalk or you can say an intersection, okay? The Choraha uh, has been named after Lata Mangeshkar and that Choraha is located in Ayodhya, Uttar Pradesh. So guys, it uh, was on the 93rd birth anniversary of Lata Mangeshkar that we have named an intersection in the city of Ayodhya after Lata Mangeshkar. You can clearly see this is the chalk, okay, which has been developed like, uh, you can say like a full-fledged, uh, you can say park kind of a thing. Here you can see the Veena. So it is a long statue of Veena that has been developed and it has been installed in this Lata Mangeshkar chalk. Moving ahead, 
on the occasion of the 93rd birth anniversary of this famous legendary singer i would say madhya pradesh government has given kumar sanu shalendra singh and the duo of anand and milind these people have got the lata mangeshkar award national lata mangeshkar award now guys the award is named as the national award but it is given by a state government and that government is madhya pradesh government so do remember madhya pradesh government gives this national lata mangeshkar award okay the next question is where is the chippy green field airport located so here guys Sindhudurg is the right answer. Uh, so this is the map of Maharashtra. Here you can see different districts, and this is guys your Sindhudurg district where the Chippy Greenfield Airport is located, and it has been uh, renamed. Okay. After your barrister Nath Pai. Okay, so he was a freedom fighter, and after his name, the Greenfield Airport in Chippy has been. okay so that is all now here certain details have been given about this person that he represented the vengurla so it is a location in sindhudurg district so he represented the rajapur uh, lok sabha uh, constituency from this tenure to from 1957 to 1967 as the praja socialist party leader not at all an important information for all of you to remember just for your general awareness the statement has been given now remember that 2022 is the birth centenary of the of this legendary person okay now you have to tell me the date okay of nath pai's birthday the fourth question is recently uttar pradesh cabinet has announced to establish ranipur tiger reserve in the bundelkhand region which it shares with its neighboring state madhya pradesh it will be the first tiger reserve in the bundelkhand region how many tiger reserves were located in the state prior to this announcement so here guys prior to this announcement three tiger reserves were there which is not in the option uh, option unfortunately but three tiger reserves were there and it is going to be the fourth tiger reserve okay in the state of uttar pradesh and in the bundelkhand region it is going to be the first ever tiger reserve okay now bundelkhand region let me first show you so guys this is the bundelkhand region which is shared between uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh this entire region the green area is collectively called as the bundelkhand region okay now in this region a tiger reserve is going to be established which will be the first tiger reserve of uttar pradesh okay sorry in the bundelkhand region and fourth tiger reserve of the uttar pradesh therefore it would be established in this area which comes in the boundary area of uttar pradesh now guys the other tiger reserves so first is dudhwa tiger reserve then pilbhit tiger reserve these two are the full fledged tiger reserves in uttar pradesh then we have amangad reserve which is the buffer area of the corbet tiger reserve oh corbet uh, tiger reserve ka ye buffer area hai which is known as the amangad in uttar pradesh okay so it will be established under the uh, you can say inside the ranipur wildlife sanctuary in chitrakoot district moving on to the fifth question with which company has coromandel international Chambal Fertilizers and Indian Potash Limited signed an MOU to ensure an uninterrupted supply of potash in the country. So here, what is the right answer? The right answer is Canpotex. Now, guys, this Canpotex is one of the largest potash suppliers in the world. Okay, and it belongs to the country of Canada. I hope you guys have uh, seen my video on the fertilizer, where in I discuss the government's intention. of banning the fertilizer subsidy not exactly banning but restricting the subsidy on fertilizer uh, and also the government's intention to launch the pm pranam scheme so if you haven't watched that video i would recommend you all to watch it because there i have extensively discussed the fertilizer usage consumption production in india and what is the entire scenario okay so do watch it if you want it if you want to know more about the fertilizer scenario in india 
not coming to this news. So under this MOU, uh, first of all, know that Coromandel International Chambal Fertilizers and Indian Potash Limited, these three organizations have signed this MOU with this Canpotex and under this MOU, 15 uh, lakh metric tons of potash will be supplied to India annually for three years. So this is basically in order to secure the supply of potash to India. That is why this MOU has been signed. I hope all of you are aware of this turbulent situation in the international market regarding the fertilizers. Uh, at their prices okay so in order to have a secure supply of fertilizers over a period of time this mou has been signed now potash guys is a source of potassium for the soil and it is used in two forms first is in your murate of potash and second is as your uh, nutrient in the combination of nitrogen potassium and uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Okay, So, in that combination also and as MOP also, the potassium is given to the soil at different stages. Okay, So, that is why potassium is important and the supply of it is crucial for Indian agriculture sector and this also highlights the need to shift to the organic farming because here completely we are 100% dependent on imports for potash particularly. Okay, So, that is why we need to focus more on making our own industry stand on its uh, feet. India imports approximately 40 lakh metric tons of MOP annually and Department of Fertilizer has included the potash derived from molasses in the nutrient based subsidy scheme so that we can uh, you can say boost our own Indian industry. Okay, So potassium which is derived from the molasses. Okay? that potassium will be given the subsidy under the nutrient based subsidy scheme which was launched in 2010 by the government moving ahead which edition of the world green economy summit was organized in uae in 2022 so here eighth edition of this summit was organized and it is not a very significant event i would say because such summits are organized very often in uh, different parts of the world so similarly, there is one more summit, the eighth edition of the World Green Economy Summit and it was organized at the Dubai World Trade Center by the World Green Economy Organization. Now, where is the headquarter of this World Green Economy Organization? This is your next question. Do tell me in the comment section. So that is all about it. Now, there is a theme of the summit as well. So the theme is climate action leadership through collaboration the roadmap to net zero okay so this is the theme of this summit and one more thing that uae is going to host the cop 28 28th edition of the conference of parties of united nation conference uh, for climate change okay so unf triple c key uh, 28th cop will be hosted by uae and 27th cop will be hosted by egypt in November this year okay so that is an important and additional fact that you should be aware of and remember that Shram Al Sheikh is the city where Egypt will host this uh, this some um, this COP 27 because this city can be asked directly in your examination and most probably such type of question can be there in your phase one or prelims of your different kinds of examination so if any one of you uh, who has the examination whatever examination is it so you can remember this news because this can become a question okay now cop28 i have already told you uae is going to host that and the pledge of becoming the net zero by uae is till 2050 the next question is which company has signed an mou with uae based lulu international exchange to work as its collection partner in India. So here guys, Muthut Finance is the right answer. So basically, this Lulu International Exchange and Muthut Finance have collaborated so that the, all the people, all the family members of the NRIs in UA, okay, the family members who have taken loan, gold loan from this Muthut Finance. So they their NRI uh, family members like NRI sons or daughters can make the payment by sitting at their 
uh, homes only in UAE, this MOU has been signed. Okay, for example, so this is A, the son or the daughter of the Sharma family. Okay, Sharmas are very, uh, you can say, very common surname. So this Sharma family has taken a gold loan from Muthoot Finance. Now what will happen uh, through this partnership? Now through this partnership, this A who lives in Dubai, he can send money, he or she can send money to this Muthoot Finance. He or she can pay for the gold loan which the family has taken through this MOU, okay, under this MOU by using the platform of Lulu International Exchange. Okay, so that is the basic news. So here some additional information has been given to you. First is that India is one of the largest recipient of remittances and I hope all of you are aware of it because we have many reports that come that are released by UN which always state this fact that India is one of the largest recipients of the uh, you can say remittances. Now Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka have historically uh, received the highest amount of remittances from the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Now, which countries are members of this Gulf Cooperation Council? This is your next question. Do tell me in the comment section. Okay. Muthoot Finance has also launched its another initiative which is named as Gold Loan at Home. And under this initiative, it provides the loan in exchange of the gold at the doorstep of the borrower. So, that is the another initiative of this company that you should be aware of. The next question is a bit lengthy question. So it is MasterCard in collaboration with Dokonomi has recently de developed the MasterCard carbon calculator to provide access to insights and data about carbon impact and enable people to easily contribute to preserving the environment. The MasterCard carbon calculator informs consumers about the carbon footprint of their purchases so that they can make more mindful spending decisions and contribute to forest restoration. Which country does the Dokonomi belong to? So here guys, the right answer is option C, Sweden. So MasterCard and this company Dokonomi, both of them have collaborated to launch this carbon calculator and what is the purpose of this carbon cap calculator you have read it in the question itself that is to provide the information about the spending which the consumer is doing and whether that spending is harming the nature or whether it is being used for the nature for example if you buy a leather bag okay by using your mastercard a uh, payment system like mastercard credit card or debit card whatever it is and you have this facility you have this application uh, or website on your mobile so you will be easily able to track whether this is harming the environment or not and obviously a pure leather bag is completely harming the environment because it is derived from the animal skin okay or if you are purchasing the completely wooden uh, you can say uh, furniture so that is also impacting the environment because that is leading towards deforestation we are cutting more trees so that we can produce more furniture for the consumers like us okay so in that manner you will be aware of the spending that you are doing whether it is harming the nature or not. so that is the basic idea of this carbon calculator so it will help you in uh, you can say making your lifestyle according to the environment so lifestyle for environment the campaign launched by prime minister narendra modi so this you can say a very valuable step towards fulfilling the vision of this life initiative launched by the prime minister however there is no official or visible links between this campaign and this carbon calculator initiative i am just making the connection between the two but you can understand it that in any way, this initiative is definitely going to change the lifestyle of the people and if they are becoming aware and if they are making uh, relevant choices which are in the favor of environment, then obviously that is a step towards life only, okay? Um, okay, so something more is given. It enables consumers to receive a snapshot of the carbon emissions generated by their purchases across the spending category so it is only what i have explained to you 
मूविंग अहेड विच बैंक हैज लॉन्च खुशियों का त्योहार कैंपेन फॉर ऑफरिंग फेवरेबल इंटरेस्ट रेट्स ऑन होम लोन एंड कार्ड सो अगेन द बैंक इनिशिएटिव आर ऑलवेज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज यू गाइज आर बैंकिंग एस्पेक्ट सो विच बैंक इट इज इट इज गाइज बैंक ऑफ बड़ोदा बैंक ऑफ बड़ोदा हैज लॉन्च दिस खुशियों का त्योहार इनिशिएटिव or you can say campaign and it is basically a you can say a marketing technique under which it has the uh, downgraded its uh, loan interest rate on home loans and car so that is the basic idea nothing much to discuss here and this interest rate is not at all important for you to memorize okay so the last question but the very important question of the day the new cds has been appointed so who is that person the person is anil chauhan so he is the new cds after the death of our former cds now uh, the new cds has been appointed okay so he is a very well known expert on the uh, you can say chinese border indo chinese border because he has worked there so he it is his expertise he has led the eastern army command something more about him prior to his appointment as the cds he was working as a military advisor of ajit doval who is the national security advisor and the national security council okay and this is the first time that we have a retired three star officer okay lieutenant general air marshal and vice admiral so these three ranks in different forces are the three rank uh, three star rank of uh, ranking and this is the first time that a three star ranked person has got the four star rank position after retirement okay so he is a retired person okay so that is all for today i hope you have enjoyed the video and if there is anything that you want to share with me you all are welcome please provide your feedbacks and the answers of my question in the comment section below thank you so much for watching this video